Today we're going to do a gentle booty yoga class. Uh, it's an active recovery. I'm going to emphasize twists um, today and opening up the hips. Uh, since we work the glutes an awful lot, we, they do need to be stretched out a little bit. And because we're not doing as many heat building based exercises, definitely layer up a bit, uh, especially if you're in a place where it's winter. I'm in a place where it's winter right now in Colorado. And today is only one degree, which is negative 16 for my Celsius friends. So it is very cold. So we're going to start in a comfortable seated position. So this is important because not, this is not uh, comfortable for everybody. If this happens to be you, your legs are kind of jammed up because you've got one, either you have tight hips or structurally your hips will just will not allow for what is external rotation right here. Then you can grab, you got blankets, you got pillows, or whatever is available um, at your place, and then just sit on your blanket. It just gets yourself up off the floor a little bit higher. This allows some room for those legs to be able to have more range of motion in a sense. Okay, but we're just trying to find a comfortable seated position. And uh, for some of you, whether you're you're Overly flexible or not isn't the point when we're using the blocks. It just changes the practice and the pose a little bit um, to make it a little bit gentler so we're not working as hard. That is the key today is active recovery. Okay, so we're just going to start like we usually do. We're going to have our hands in our heart, closing our eyes, and just pausing and taking this time to notice if our breath is calm. Not necessarily deep quite yet, just calm. And the intention today is recovery. So just like in a strength class where I emphasize embracing the available strength that you were given for that day, same thing holds true for flexibility. We're only given so much flexibility for the day based off so many things. The body's either going to release or it isn't. You're either going to get a big release or you're not. And we're here to embrace it, accept it, and be gentle with the body. So inhale, reach up. And we're going to exhale. We're going to side bend to the right, taking the right hand to the floor. And we're going to reach to the right side of the room with the left arm. Now definitely bend your right arm so we can help find some range of motion. Drop your shoulder a little bit. Open up your shoulder, reach. There's so many tight muscles. Each individual fiber wants to be touched. Don't think that we're going to catch all of them just being in one particular position. We can definitely settle after we move around. And now inhale, coming back to center. We're now going to take our right hand to the left knee. Left hand goes underneath your left shoulder. We're going to sit nice and tall. We're just going to gently twist the shoulders. The shoulders move first and then the gaze follows. And a nice, easy, gentle stretch. And then we're going to come back to center. Bring our hands back to our heart. And again, just pausing for that moment in case you got lost in trying to twist too hard. Trying to get something more from the body that's just not available quite yet. Or maybe it's not available today. Mm -hmm. Noticing the breath. Is it calm? And now switching the cross of your legs. We're going to inhale, reach up again. This time we're going to side bend to the left. So we're going to take the left hand to the floor as we side bend to the left. We're reaching for the left side of the room. We're going to allow the left arm to bend. And again, if you need to open up, you need to drop that shoulder. Good. Before you settle into the pose. It's not about going as far as I'm going. It's recognizing what your body is able to give you today. And then inhale. Coming back to center, and now we're going to take the left hand to the right knee, right hand underneath the right shoulder. We're going to sit nice and tall again, and gently we're going to twist at the shoulders, and the gaze goes back towards the back of the room. And just letting the breath be full and gentle, the twist be very gentle. 
And then you're just going to come back to the front of the room, releasing your twist, and again, we're coming right back, hands at our heart, closing our eyes, right back at the intention. Being kind to ourselves. Being patient with ourselves. Being gentle. And now release the hands. You're going to walk the hands out in front of you. And we're going to move into a tabletop position. So your hands don't have to be exactly right underneath those shoulders. You can take them a little bit lighter. So, it's really transitioning first right here. So we're just going to open up those knees a little bit. We're going to sit right in between those feet. Take the hands back behind you. We're moving into here, at least my version of it. And then your hip bones move up towards the rib cage so we can get the entire quadricep. And then we lift up the hips. We're not lifting so high that the knees open up. That's our indicator that we've gone too far. And then, we push the floor away. Now, I prefer to be on my fingertips. People do prefer to be on their hands, so be real careful with that. If you have sensitive hands or wrists, I come up on top of your, your fingers. Push the floor away, lifting up the chest, lifting up the gaze. Now, not, not everybody's neck likes this, so you can drop that chin. And then, you, again, you might have to move around. It's that stretch that we that we enjoy doing when we've been sitting too long or when we're just waking up. And then release, sitting back down. Now taking your hands back out in front. Knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. Just going to move through cat-cow. When we inhale, we're just going to lift up the gaze, lift up the tail. And then exhale, rounding, tucking the chin, tucking the tail. And then again, inhale, lifting up. And exhale. And last one. Inhale up. Make sure your elbows are slightly bent. And then exhale. We're just going to find neutral. We're just going to walk our knees back away from the hands. And we're just going to lower all the way down. So this is a strength pose. So if they contract the shoulder blades back and together, squeeze those cheeks so you do have stability. Just because it's a gentler base class doesn't mean we skip that part. We're going to curl the toes. And then we're going to inhale, pressing up into your king cobra. We're trying to keep at least the thighs on the floor, if not the pelvis. We're not trying to get our arms straight, if, especially if you're going to end up shrugging the shoulders. We want to slide those shoulders back down. Hopefully you're still breathing. Find an inhale. Exhale, lower down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. We're going to curl the toes back under. Re engage the glutes. Lower abdominals. Contract the upper back. Pressing yourself up nice and strong. Lifting up the hips. Straightening out the legs and moving into down dog. And just like every time we get into down dog one, there's no expectation of what down dog feels like or looks like. Except we got to create stability and make it a gentler base pose. Okay? So you may have to bend your knees. You may have to shift your weight back into the legs if you've got too much in the upper body. Sliding those shoulders down the back. Okay, just pause and breathe. Now inhale, push back. Exhale, walk your feet up towards your hands. Feet are about hips width apart. That's approximately two fists in between your hands. You're just going to tuck the chin. You're going to grab the opposite elbow with the hand. And then you're just going to begin to sway from right to left. And just breathing, enjoying. The pose, if you find that your knees happen to be locked out, you've got too much weight in the heel and I need you to shift your weight over the arch of the foot to unlock the knees. Good. And coming back to center, releasing the hands to the floor. We're still going to squeeze those cheeks for the half lifts, out the chest, out the tail, tucking the chin. 
Exhale, fold. You're going to bring your arms out to the side, contracting those shoulder blades back and together. Squeeze those cheeks to help pull you all the way up to standing. Exhale, fold. Again, squeeze those cheeks for the half lift. Stick out the chest, out the tail. Exhale, walk or jump back. You can be on your toes or knees. Squeeze those cheeks, contract the shoulder blades back and together, going down with control. And inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And we're just trying to build some heat. Pausing in the down dog, trying to lift up that tailbone. Again, you may have to bend the knees a little bit. You may have to take your hands wider. And inhale, push back. Exhale, walk or jump your feet to your hands. Squeeze those cheeks for the half lift. Stick out the chest, out the tail. Exhale, fold. Bringing your arms out to the side, contracting those shoulder blades back and together, squeezing those cheeks to help pull you up to standing. Exhale, fold. Squeeze the cheeks for the half lift. Stick out the chest, out the tail. Exhale, walk or jump back. Squeeze those cheeks, contract the backs of the armpits towards each other, drawing the belly in and lowering down. Inhale, pressing up through a king cobra. Exhale, back down. Curl your toes under, squeeze those cheeks, the upper back, lower abdominals, press yourself up. And then find your damn dog. If you want to play around with taking your feet outside of your mat, just feel free to move around to Touch the groin just a bit. You may feel a stretch all the way into the inside of your feet or your heel. And inhale. Push back, exhale, walk your feet to your hands. Squeeze those cheeks for the half lift. Exhale, fold. Bringing your arms out to the side, contracting those shoulder blades back and together, squeezing those cheeks to pull you all the way up. Exhale, fold. Squeeze the cheeks for the half lift. Exhale, walk or jump back. And squeeze the cheeks, contract the shoulder blades back and together. Lower abdominals, lowering down. Inhale, up through a cobra. Exhale, back down. Curling the toes back under, engaging the glutes, lower abdominals, upper back. And finding down dog. Again, feel free as those layers of tightness is surface. Some of them just need that release through that gentle movement. That way it's easier to settle down into a pose and be still. Inhale, your right leg up. You're going to exhale, low lunge. You're going to set your left knee down onto the floor. Squeeze those cheeks, pulling yourself on up. To a kneeling crescent pose. And we're just going to push the hips forward, lift, lifting up the chest, lifting up the gaze. We still slide the shoulders down the back, squeeze those cheeks, draw the belly in. If your neck doesn't like it, just tuck the chin. And now inhale, coming back to center. So we're going to shift weight to the back, to a little bit more weight to the back knee, hands to the heart. And we're just going to re engage the glutes, lower abdominals. Upper back, finding an inhale. And exhale, you're going to twist to your right. So you're going to twist away from me, probably. Okay. Now, when we twist, I don't want you to twist with the right shoulder. I want you to twist with the left shoulder. That initiates the twist. You'll find you'll have a little bit more range of motion, and you'll also find that's easier on the shoulders. Now, if you want to reach for the front of the room and the back of the room, feel free to do that. Remember, we want to twist with the left shoulder to tell the right shoulder what to do. And now, inhale, bring your gaze and your chest back to the front of your room. Exhale, take the hands to the floor. We're going to straighten out the back leg. Now, we're going to straighten out the front leg. Bring your back leg in just enough to get the left heel onto the floor. This is where we're going to try to square up. Now, if you find that you're on a balance beam, my feet are too close to each other, not front and back, but right to left. 
So I'm not going to be able to get anything good from my hips right here, my hamstrings. So I'm going to heel toe my right foot out a little bit so I can create some space, hips width apart. And then I'm going to begin to fold over the front leg. Now, some of you are not going to be able to get to the floor with your hands to the floor and be able to keep the legs straight. Okay, perfect. Grab something that will bring the floor closer to you. Okay, this way you can then straighten out the leg and work that particular area that happens to be tight on you. We're just folding over the leg. We're just tucking the chin. Now some of you might have the opposite problem. There's a lot of, there's a lot of slack here in the arm. If that happens to be the case, then turn your hands back towards your back foot. And then just straighten out those leg, those arms like that. Okay. Just taking a couple of breaths in. We're not trying to shrug the shoulders. Slide those shoulders down the back. If you have nothing available today, all you have to do is just bring your hands to your waist. Okay. Now, bring your left hand underneath your left shoulder. Again, if you want your block, feel free to grab a block. Find some length so we can stick out the chest, out the tail. And we're going to twist to your right. And we're not leading with the right hand, we're leading with the left shoulder, the left hand. Now I'm not resting in this block. I'm pushing that block away and I'm fairly light in it. Okay? And I'm just twisting towards the right side of the room. Now for some of you, this is still not going to feel very nice on your right shoulder somewhere. You can always get it out of the way. It's not important, okay? Again, the block just changes. Some of you, it's going to help get you the, where you need to be in the pose. Like today, I just don't belong on the floor. My hamstrings are tight um, and relax. You're going to come back around with your right hand to the floor. We're squaring back up. Now, we're going to take the right hand to the outside of the right foot or your block to the outside of the right foot. And we're just going to move into trikonasana. Okay, just nice, easy, straight leg poses. And you can look towards the ceiling, you can look towards the floor, but you're just not resting in that hand. You've got to push the floor away. We're still going to create some sort of stability here. Active day off. Now, bring your left hand back to the floor. I'm just going to move the block out of the way. We're going to walk around to the left, so you're going to face the left side of your room, which at this point might probably be away from me, so you can easily turn around. You can take your feet wider if you'd like. You're going to take your right hand to the outside of your right foot, I mean your left foot. And now we're going to try to square that pelvis back up because sometimes we'll let the pelvis we'll go over and we'll get a bigger right groin stretch. I'm actually after the lower back. Now let's say you can't grab the ankle. Well, just move your hand up the leg. All right, now we're just going to walk around back towards the right. So we're going to end up facing what is the front of the room. All right, we're going to take your right hand to the inside of your right foot. We're going to drop the left knee to the floor. We're just going to slide it back a little bit. And your right foot, you're going to walk it out to the right just a little bit. Okay, and then we're just going to come down maybe to our forearms. Okay, now this is a runner's lunge. All right, now you can go to the outer edge and start rocking here, okay? Now let's say you can't get your forearms to the floor. That's all right. Just grab your blanket or your block, okay? Maybe you want your back legs straight while you do this. That's fine too, okay? And we're just trying to be a little gentle on ourselves. We've worked really, really hard. Body deserves that reward just as much as we deserve the reward after the fact. And the reward is a, a strong, safe body. Now, bring your hands back underneath your shoulders. Now, you're going to take your right hand to the outside of your right leg. Curl your back toes under. 
Left hand underneath the left shoulder. We're going to find length through the spine again. We're going to scout the chest out, the tail. Squeeze those cheeks, draw the belly, and we're going to twist to your right again. Remember, we want to twist by pushing the floor away with the left hand. We twist with the left shoulder, the left rib cage. So it's not as tight as a twist as the other twist. Shoulder still doesn't like it, just get it out of the way. And then take the top arm, reaching for the front of the room. Taking your right hand back down to the floor. Straighten out your front leg, bring your back leg in just enough again just to get that left heel onto the floor. Bring your hands in a prayer position. Squeeze those cheeks to help pull you up to a standing position. Good. And now take a step forward, left meets right, bring your hands to your heart. Whew. Nice. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, scout the chest, out the tail. Exhale, walk or jump back. We're just going to lift up those hips this time instead of running through a chaturanga. And again, feel free to pedal to kick or twist. Inhale, your left leg up. Exhale, low lunge. You're going to lower your right knee to the floor. Squeeze those cheeks to help pull you up to a kneeling crescent. And then push the hips forward, lifting up the gaze. Any zingers, painful sensation that's just telling you you've gone too far, you just need to pause is all. Back out of the pose. The body talks to us through sensation. And now inhale, coming back to the front of the room. And then just exhale, bring your hands to your heart. So remember, we're going to back out of that, that stretch a little bit. Re-engage the glutes, the lower abdominals. And now we're going to twist to your left. Remember, we're twisting with the right shoulder. It tells the left shoulder what to do. Feel free to keep your hands here or begin to open up. Remember, we still twist with the right shoulder. This is, your left shoulder doesn't like it. You just get it out of the way or just bring your hands back to your heart. Okay. Now bring your hands back to your heart, coming out of the twist. And now bring your hands to the floor. Straighten out the back leg. Straighten out the front leg. Bring your right foot in just enough to get the heel onto the floor. And again, if you're less than hips width apart, just heel toe your left foot out to the left a little bit. It helps you square up the pelvis because some of you might be in, have, have this particular angle. If that's the case, bend your left knee, you shift your weight over, square the hips up, and then you're going to find the tightness that really exists there. So you might not be able to straighten out your leg. But remember, you have the block to help bring the floor closer to you. Okay. Slide the shoulders down the back, tucking the chin. Good. Now, take your right hand underneath the right shoulder. We're finding some length. And if you use the block on the other side, definitely grab it again. And we're finding legs, stick out the chest, out the tail, squeeze those cheeks. We're going to twist towards your left. Remember, we want to twist with the right shoulder, really light in the hand. Left arm doesn't like it, you just get it out of the way, because it's truly in the way. So we, again, we be gentle, the body's talking to us. The body's saying, hey, that hurts, please don't do that anymore. All right, now we bring our left hand back to the floor. We just square up. If you're using the block, take it to the outside of your left foot. So left hand goes up on the outside of the left foot. And we find some length, squeeze those cheeks. And we're going to twist open to the right. So we're still twisting, so we still initiate the twist with the left hand. Find length, squeezing those cheeks. Gaze can either be up or it can be down. Uh, now, coming back around, moving the block off to the side. You're going to walk around to the right this time, bringing your feet around, which you can go wider if you'd like. And now take the left hand to the outside of the right ankles. So I know you're getting a big shot of my backside, but that's good. 
good because you're going to be able to see like some people will shift all that weight into the right leg, it's a bigger stretch into the groin, and then they lose that stretch that's in the lower back. So you try to square up that pelvis again. You'll notice you'll probably get a stretch in the right groin and then the left lower back. Good, you're just gonna come back to center. You're gonna begin to walk around back towards what's the front of the room for you. Bring your feet with you. You heel toe the left foot out to the left. You're going to slide your left hand to the inside. Drop your left knee to the floor, or your right knee to the floor. And now take maybe your both forearms to the floor, maybe it's just one, and you've got a rock right here. It is okay to go to the outer edge of your foot. Now, let's say your foot is way back here, and then your heel pops off the floor. Well, then I need you to walk your foot forward because your ankle mobility is restricting what we can get into the hip. Okay. And again, we're just going to the outer edge and just let this be organic. We're just feeling around. We're loosening things up before we do get into the hip a little more. All right. Now, bring your hands underneath the shoulders. Take your left hand to the outside of your left foot. Straighten out the back leg, right hand underneath the right shoulder. We're finding some length again. We engage the glutes, lower abdominals, and we're twisting towards your left. We initiate the twist with the left, with your right shoulder. All right, remember if the left shoulder doesn't like it, just get it out of the way. Take the top arm, reaching for the front of the room, just finding some length. Good, and now take the left hand to the floor, straighten out your front leg. Bring your back leg in just enough to get the right heel onto the floor. We're going to bring our hands in front of your left foot in a prayer position. Slight bend into your left knee. Squeeze those cheeks. They help pull you up. And then take a step forward. Bring your hands to your heart. Nice job. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, walk or jump back. Again, we're just going to lift up those hips and just move right into a down dog. We're going to come down to our knees and we're just going to sit back into a child's pose. And what we're going to do for child's pose today, we're going to walk our hands to the right. We're going to open up the left hand, place it on top of the left or the right hand, and just get into the lats here. You're going to feel this anywhere in the shoulders, along the rib cage, the lower back. Feel free to move around. It's just really gentle twist. Of course, you can just keep going. Remember, there might not be anything to stretch. And now, Walk your hands over to the left. Taking your right hand, you're opening up the palm towards the ceiling. You're placing it on top of the left hand. You might not be able to interlace your fingers like I'm doing. Remember, it doesn't matter. That's not the goal. The goal is to get a release on your right side of your rib cage and maybe your lower back. Good. Now coming to center. Relaxing the arms. Good. Now we're just going to come up to a tabletop. All we're going to do is just cross those ankles, have a seat, and now take those legs out. Now, once again, if you've got, if you have a really tight groin, more specifically at Dr. Magnus, what that's going to do to your pelvic position here, because we're trying to get tall. Don't look at my chest. You want to be right at that sacrum. The sacrum does need to be perpendicular to the floor. If you have really super tight this particular groin muscle, what it's going to do, it's going to take your pelvis and tuck it under along with the hamstrings if they happen to be tight. What we're trying to do is get nice and tall right up on top of those sits bones. So this is where the blanket 
comes in, or pillows. You may have to fold it more than that. You're going to sit on it right on the edge, not right in the center, right on the edge, because what that's going to do is that's going to help get you set up for that nice position. Move you into, it's not an anterior pelvic tilt, but it's going to move you in that direction if you have an excessive posterior tilt. Okay? And it's a better stretch. It's not about getting your legs as wide as mine. Okay? Now, Flexibility is something that you are born with, and I lucked out, um, but at the same time, that makes me structurally unsound. I have to do a lot of weightlifting, actually, to help protect my joints uh, because of the range of motion that I do have. So I have to be careful with that. That's how, why I designed the yoga the way that I did. All right? But this is as far as we're going to take this particular stretch, and we're still going to get into twists. So we're just going to inhale the left arm up, we're going to exhale side bend towards the right. So when we side bend, it's so normal for us to drop the top shoulder. So again, you can use your leg as a block if you need to. Of course, you can slide the hand to the inside and use it as leverage, because now we're going to try to stack the shoulders and you're going to end up opening up towards the left side of your room. Okay, And you're going to try to straighten out that arm and reach again. You can, Drop the shoulder a little bit and open to help release. Good. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale, lower the arm. Inhale, the right arm up. Exhale, side bend. Again, we're trying to find our place. Is it the thigh? Is it the inside of the leg? We're dropping the shoulder again. That's normal. But now we open it back up. Try to keep those toes flexed if you can. Reaching for the left side of the room. Again, you've got to open up. Drop down what needs, what's going to give you a release. Not, every, not everything is going to release for you today. And then inhale, coming up to a seated position. Exhale, lower the arm. So now we're going to turn our chest towards the right leg. And we're going to begin to walk out. I don't want you to get to your foot if you're not able to get to your foot. Because what a lot of people will do is they think they've got to get to their foot and then they shrug their shoulders. And then they're just creating this illusion that they're releasing something. And in reality, they're just creating a lot of neck tension. And so whatever is available, that might be the outside of the calf up by the knee. Might be mid-calf, might be the ankle. And it just might be the foot. Okay? So we're going to use the leg as leverage. So we're going to try to pull on it. And then you're going to take your right hand and you're going to push into the floor. So it's a push-pull thing so we can get into the rib cage again. So we're just going to push and pull. And notice I'm trying to lift up my shoulder a little bit, and then I just release. And what that's going to help me do, again, my goal is not necessarily to touch my feet. It's just to get that release in my muscle. And again, I'm just going to do it again. I have a lot of tightness in that rib cage. And then I just release and I move on. I'm just going to walk my hands around. I'm going to square my shoulders up, and again, Whatever is available for me, okay? So that again might be up by the knee, might be mid-calf, might be the ankle, might be the foot. Left hand pushes into the floor as you pull on the leg. And again, we're just looking for a stretch so you can get a nice release. So you can settle into the pose, okay? Because sometimes what's restricting the fold has nothing to do with the lower body, but has everything to do with the torso. All right, so we're just going to come back to center. We're going to walk our hands in, and now we're just going to release those legs. Just shake them out a little bit. Okay. You're going to bring your right foot into the inside of the leg, and we're just sitting nice and tall. We're going to fold over again. It's not about getting to your toe if it's not easily accessible to you. We are going to take the right foot to the outside of the leg, and then you can take the left arm out. Again, we're just looking for a real gentle twist. We're looking for something that might be affecting movement patterns in this direction. And then release. And then just switch legs. Again, your foot doesn't have to be as high up on the thigh. Again, that's just what's available to me. Remember, we're trying to embrace what's available. Structure-wise, we'll restrict a lot of this movement, not necessarily flexibility. 
So again, we're just going to the outer edge of somewhere along the leg. Again, it might be the foot. Try not to shrug the shoulders. Take the hand out. And we're just twisting at the shoulder and just finding, again, what's available for you. And then release. All right, so we're just surrounding the hip to release the hip. Now we're just going to find a double pigeon position. So this is really kind of a horrible pose for a lot of people. Bottom leg does affect the intensity of the top leg, so we're just going to pull it in. And if that helps you out, this happens to be your position. If this is just excruciating, then straighten out your bottom leg, lean backwards, and figure four is just another name for pigeon. That's all it is. As long as you're getting your stretch in that hip, that's all that matters. Okay? And now you can lean forward. You can twist. So my left leg happens to be on top. Okay? And so I'm just going to twist to the right to get that, that release for me and maybe stretch out with that left arm as I move my right arm back because that's what's going to affect that flexibility right there. And we just release. Then we just got to go to the other side. Okay, now remember, this is the most advanced, I hate using that word, position. If it's available to you, go into it. If it's not available to you, just bring that bottom knee or that bottom foot in to help out that top leg or straighten out your bottom leg and move into a figure four position, okay? The hip stretch that's gonna, give, that's gonna be most effective for you is the one that you can be um, comfortable in, okay? Now, I'm not comfortable at, while I'm not comfortable, it's not restricting my breathing, okay? I'm not struggling to be in the pose, but I'm also moving around to help myself to be in the pose to get the release, because your brain places a protective reflex on some of these muscles, and that's why some people really struggle with a release if you're just holding, holding, holding. And that's why I have you move around quite a bit. It helps. Um, it's like rocking a child. Um, nothing will soothe somebody faster than rocking, okay? Because we all do it. We all do it. Release, because you know when we're in a store, we hear a little kid crying, we feel really bad for that mom. Okay, so you're just going to lie on your back. And so inevitably, we all start rocking to help send soothing energy to that mom and that baby, or the dad. Cross your right leg over the left leg. You're going to drop your knees to your right. We're just dropping to the inside of the left foot, going to that outside of or letting the outer edge of the left foot come off the floor. And we're just getting into just a different angle for some usual suspects right here. Glute need, iliacus, TFL. And just coming back to center, releasing, switching the cross, left over right, dropping the knees to the left. A lot of times the hips aren't tight because of the hip, it's because of the surrounding muscles. And then release. Hugging the knees in towards the chest and now extending the left leg all the way out, taking the left hand to the outside of the right leg, extending the right arm out, taking the knee across the body. Now you can have the foot right in front of the knee. If you do, pull the knee up. It'll catch the hip a little bit more, especially if you're looking for that, and then actively twist to the right. But again, don't force anything, just be real natural. Just breathe, let the breath help. If you decide you want to hook your toe behind the knee, it lowers the knee, and we're catching muscles that are, that are at a junction point between the pelvis and the lower back. It's just emphasizing the difference. And then release, coming back to center, hugging both knees in towards the chest. And now extend the right leg all the way out to the floor, taking the right hand to the outside of the left knee, standing the right arm out, palm is up, taking the knee across the body. And again, we're just trying to actively twist to the left as we take that knee over. Again, if the foot's in front, it catches the hip a little bit more. Now the reason I have that palm up is so we can catch the chest and the the shoulder, the more of the rib cage, the upper aspect of the rib cage. 
course, if you want to hook the toe behind the knee, lowering it down. Good. And release. Hugging the knees in towards the chest. And now sending the legs on out. We're here for a Shavasana. Now, it's just to allow the body and the mind to acclimate. We embraced our available flexibility that we were given today. We didn't push. And we made massive changes today. Thank you for that. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.